I welcome you all in the name of Jesus. We are on the series. People that had an encounter, physical encounter with Jesus. Nicodemus is the person we are looking at who had an encounter with the Lord Jesus. We can find his story in the book of John chapter number 3. And I read John chapter number 3. Kindly get your Bible from verse 1. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. Verse number three, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked, Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Verse number five, Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of water and of the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. John chapter number three, verse eight, John three, verse eight the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear a sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, Jesus said. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. Verse 12, John chapter number 3 verse 12. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How will you believe when I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Verse 14, John chapter 3 verse 14. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men loved darkness instead of light because their deeds are evil. Verse 20, everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. Verse 21, whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. John chapter number 3 verses 1 to 21. We see Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a member of the ruling council called the Sanhedrin. So this man was a very highly respected person. He was a member of the ruling council. And the Pharisees that, like we know, they're a group of religious leaders whom Jesus, they were very jealous of his ministry. This group of Pharisees, they were the, the leaders whom Jesus and John the Baptist often criticized because they were the religious leaders at the time. And so the ministry of John the Baptist and Jesus witnessed them trying to correct what these Pharisees were doing. They were the ones that would be openly showing that they are fasting. You know, they used to do a lot of things. They were the ones that were criticizing Jesus when he went to eat with sinners. He was trying to bring in the lost so the Pharisees were often criticized for being hypocrites. So most Pharisees and Jewish leaders were jealous of Jesus. Number one, Jesus undermined their authority. He challenged their views. But Nicodemus, though he belonged to that group, look at that. He belonged to that group, but he was searching for answers. So he came asking questions and that's what we should do it's a very good lesson no matter where you belong to please feel free to ask questions 
be confident enough to ask questions. So he came to Jesus by night. He was a learned teacher himself. He came to be taught. It's very, very important that before you imbibe an opinion that you do a searching and know, is this thing right? That's what he did. So no matter how intelligent and well-educated you are, you must come to Jesus with an open mind. You must come to Jesus with an open heart so he can teach you the truth about God. And there are so many people like that. They feel they know everything. They know everything, but they don't know the way of God. You can be a professor of physics, a professor of whatever. You still have to have a knowledge of Christ, have a knowledge of salvation. So Nicodemus came to Jesus personally. Even though he could have sent somebody, he came personally. He wanted to know. He wanted to examine Jesus for himself, to separate fact from rumor. That's what he did. He wanted to examine how can a man, he was asking questions. And he was not asking it from a point of criticism. He was asking from a point, I want to understand. And so when you're in a place where you don't understand, ask questions. Ask questions. Perhaps Nicodemus was afraid of his peers, the Pharisees. He was afraid of what they would say about his visit. So he came at night. He, look at that. He came at night. So there may be limitations, but you and I must overcome those limitations. When you're in a place you don't understand, ask questions and ask the right person. He didn't go about to Peter. He didn't call Peter aside. This is your God, what's he preaching? Peter, tell me. John, tell me. No, he went to Jesus himself. Glory be to God. And so when you don't understand, go to the right source with the right heart and find out. So Nicodemus, when he understood that Jesus was truly the Messiah, he spoke boldly in his defense. Let's look at John chapter number 7, verse 50 and 51. Let's see what happened there. Because you are going to see this same Nicodemus. He was the one that was with Joseph of Arimathea. And they were the ones that carried, we're going to see it very soon. So he didn't understand, but let's see John chapter number 7 verse 15. Nicodemus, who had gone to Jesus earlier, who was one of their own number, asked, Does our law condemn anyone without first hearing him to find out what he's doing? They replied, Are you from Galilee too? Look into it and you will find that a prophet does not come out of Galilee. So when the Pharisees rose up against Jesus, when they wanted to arrest Jesus the first time, it was Nicodemus that spoke up. He was part of them. Look at that. He was part of them. I pray for you and I. God will plant somebody in the camp of the enemy for us to speak up for us in the time needed. This was the first time they wanted to arrest Jesus. And when they were, so you need to study that John chapter number 7. When they were saying all sorts of things, <laughs> when they wanted to ridicule him, they wanted to arrest him in the temple. He was the one that spoke up. Uh -uh. He spoke up for Jesus when the religious leaders wanted to arrest him. May God raise a voice for you and I where it matters in Jesus' name. So look at Nicodemus. Though he didn't understand at first, he asked questions. He realized the truth. And he aligned with the truth. And he spoke up for the truth. In the midst of all of them. They were sitting Have you seen a prophet come out of Galilee before? He said, ah, no. Well, you people are mistaken. There are times you may be in the midst of people who have a contrary opinion. You have a responsibility. I have a responsibility to speak up. That's what Nicodemus did. So, let's go on. Like Nicodemus, we must examine Jesus for ourselves. Others cannot do it for us. If we believe he is who he says he is, we will want to speak up for him. So you are in a gathering. You have to speak up for Jesus. You are in a place and people are flying all sorts of contrary opinion. You and I must speak up for the opinion of the Lord. What would Jesus do in this matter? We shouldn't just keep quiet. He didn't just keep quiet. Glory be to God. What did Nicodemus know about the kingdom? What did he know? From the Bible, he knew it would be ruled by God. He knew it would be restored on earth. He knew that it would incorporate God's people. And Jesus revealed to this devout Pharisee that the kingdom would come to the whole world, not just the Jews. So it was to Nicodemus that that famous and that powerful scripture, John 3, 16, that's what many of us used to evangelize. That's, it was Nicodemus that Jesus said it to. John 3, 16, you and I know what that scripture is. For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It was in the conversation of Jesus with Nicodemus that that powerful scripture, and that scripture was telling him, see, salvation is not just for the Jews, because that was what they thought is for the whole world. Glory be to Jesus. So, Nicodemus was a man who had a kingdom mentality because he encountered Jesus with an open heart. Despite his background, despite that he belonged to the Sanhedrin, he knew Jesus for himself. In that situation that you and I are, do you know Jesus for yourself? Apart from what pastor is telling you, apart from what we're sharing, do you have a revelation of Christ? Until you and I have a revelation of Christ in our personal circumstance, that is what is going to keep us. Until you know that, no, I may be in this situation, but I know my Redeemer liveth. I know you may be having thoughts of death, but you know the word is real to you. Reuben shall live and not die. And you declare the word of God and you know it's going to come to pass. A personal revelation of Christ in the situation you are going through is what is going to make you scale through. And even when we encourage each other and when we share the word, it is so that you must be personally convinced and you must take the encouragement that somebody is giving you and imbibe it and have a personal revelation that I know God is with me. I know God is going to see me through. I know my life is hid in Christ and Christ is hid in God. I know that no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. The word has said it and I believe it. I believe it is well with my family. I speak the word and I know it comes to pass. Lift up your voice right now. I don't know the issue you are in. Nicodemus had a personal revelation of Christ. He went to him by himself. I don't want to hear rumor. And Jesus explained to him a lot of things. He didn't understand. How can a man be born again? How can he enter his mother's womb? Is there something you don't understand? Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to explain to you. Is there a situation? Say, Holy Spirit, show me, reveal to me this matter. I want to know from you. Some of us, we are so busy gathering counsels. It is good. In the multitude of counsel, there is safety. But there are situations where, like Nicodemus, you have to know God for yourself. And so, looking at the story of Nicodemus, you have to know that just as he knew that it's not just the Jews that would experience salvation, this was a revolution. Jesus was propagating a revolution. He was able to imbibe it. Do you know the mighty thing that God wants to do? Can your mind receive it? That great thing that God wants to do in your life or use you to do. So what Jesus was discussing with Nicodemus was against all his beliefs. Even though he was a teacher, he belonged to the St. Henry. Hallelujah. And so Jesus was telling him, you have to be born of water and of the spirit. And that's talking about physical bath, water, and spiritual bath, spirit. It is not everybody that sees Jesus that will make it. Unless we imbibe everything that he stands for. Some people saw Jesus, but they didn't believe in him. And so, it's very, very important for you and I to imbibe the word. Glory be to God. So, we are also going to see that Nicodemus, if you go to the book of John chapter 19. Open your Bible to John chapter 19. As I wrap up and then we pray. We are studying the people that had personal encounter with Jesus. John chapter 19 from verse 38. What manner of man was Nicodemus? What manner of man was he? We are throwing a searchlight into his life. Verse 38. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus. John chapter 19 verse 38. Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, because he feared the Jews, with Pilate's permission, he came and took the body of Jesus away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh, aloes, and about 75 pounds. He brought things to embalm the body of Jesus. Taking Jesus' body, the two men, glory be to God, the two men, the two of them, they wrapped the body with the spices in strips of linen. Glory be to God. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. 
At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one has ever been laid because it was the Jewish day of preparation since the day nearby. They laid Jesus there. Look at Nicodemus. Can we get some Nicodemus to arise? You may be on the wrong side of the fence. Can you follow your conviction rather than, I don't know what people will say. Look at this critical time. At this critical time, where were the apostles? The 12 disciples, where were they? Where were the people that Jesus fed? In fact, where was the mother of Jesus and his brothers? Nobody could go near the body. Nobody could go near at this time. It was only Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, people of value, people of integrity. There are times in your life and my life that we are going to need people that have capacity. Even Jesus did. The body of Jesus was lying there, albeit he was fulfilling his destiny mandate. But at that time, look at Nicodemus. Look at all the things, the provisions he brought, 75 pounds of spices. Can there be a Nicodemus arising in us right now? That there is a need in the body of Christ. That the body of Christ needs to be covered so that there will be no shame. The body of Jesus was lying there, lifeless. Because Jesus at that time had gone down to hell to take principalities and powers captive. But his body was lying down there. A Nicodemus rose up. He packed spices with linen. Joined with Joseph of Arimathea, they went and demanded for the body of Jesus. Wrapped it. Somebody wrapping the body. You and I can take our linen right now. We can take our spices right now. I don't know where you are. You might be the wife of a governor. You belong to the Sanhedrin. You don't want to be seen to do evangelism on the road. You can be the wife of a senator. You can be highly placed. You can be a Nicodemus that people are respecting you, but you've got to give honor and you've got to give attention to the things of God. He did not mind. He spoke up for Jesus when they wanted to arrest him. He spoke up when it mattered. And beyond that, he didn't stop following. Him and Joseph of Arimathea, though their circumstances were limiting them, but he didn't stop following. His heart was still yearning. And when there was a need, that you could feel. You can see him rising up to the task. You and I must rise up to the task in the body of Christ. What is the need that we can see in the body of Christ? Can you see a need to feed the hungry? Can you see the need to evangelize? Are you going to say me, enter the bus? We are going to evangelize in the bus in the month of September. We are going to do paid in full. Are you going to say, ah, why would they see me? Me that I'm driving a Jeep in the bus. That is a need in the body of Christ. As a matter of fact, that evangelism is needed now. So many people don't have transport fare. They don't have, it's too expensive. And so, I want you to arise wherever you are and take up this assignment just like Nicodemus. No matter how highly placed you are, it is God that gave you that favor. It is God that gave you that pedigree. Lift up your voice this morning as we begin to pray. Father, raise up a voice for me where it matters. Nicodemus was a voice that spoke for Jesus where it mattered in the book of John chapter number 7 from verse 50 he spoke up for Jesus when the others in his group in his company the Sanhedrin they wanted to arrest him he spoke up for him he was the one that teamed up with somebody to make sure the body does not rot on the ground oh are we going to rise up today lift up your voice I will not fail I will not fail you, O Lord. Whenever there's a need in the body of Christ that I can meet, today I decree and declare I will rise up and meet that need. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your voice and declare and declare. Just like God raised the Nicodemus for the body of Jesus, my Father, my God, raise a Nicodemus for me in life. Raise a Nicodemus for me in life. In the name of Jesus, somebody that will fill in a critical gap where it matters. In the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, in the name of Jesus, raise up a Nicodemus for me. Raise up a Nicodemus for me. My Nicodemus will not be silent. Somebody that will speak up where it matters. I may not be there, but the person will speak up. I may be powerless, but the person will arise. I may not be able to do anything, but somebody would arise and cover my shame. 
cover my body. Nicodemus covered the body of Christ. He covered the body of Christ. Lift up your voice. Father Lord, may somebody cover my body financially when I'm falling short. Lift up your voice. May somebody cover my body where my children are concerned. May somebody rise up. Oh my God. Sometimes, like yesterday when I was having my evening walk, it was already getting dark and I saw this young boy in my estate riding a bicycle and there were many cars passing. You know, the street lights were not on. I remember my children they used to ride bicycle on this road in my estate and I told the boy go back home why are you riding your bicycle at this time no light no nothing I don't know maybe that boy's mother is still in traffic maybe the boy's mother is not at home I know some of these children so may God raise up somebody for your children raise up a Nicodemus that will speak up somebody that will correct them that's what Nicodemus did he stood for Christ May there be a voice of Nicodemus to correct our children where we are not there. They say it takes a village to train a child. Yes, it takes a village to train a child. And so may God raise up a voice for your marriage. May God raise up a voice for your business. May God raise up a voice. Nicodemus was a voice in the right place and a voice that spoke up and a powerful one at that. Father Lord, raise up a voice for me. I told the boy, go back home. You're riding your bicycle now. What if a car is coming? And I remember even at the roundabout in my estate, a boy was knocked down. You know, all these children, they get so excited. And so, may God raise up somebody for you. May God raise up somebody to correct our children. We may not be there. Somebody to bring direction. Nicodemus wrapped the body of Jesus with spices. Oh my God. Do you know what that means? Nicodemus brought in something that would preserve something that we preserve. Those spices, they used to embalm the bodies to preserve. May God raise up somebody with a voice of preservation, with an action of preservation in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Ah, your business will not go down. May God raise up a Nicodemus for your business. Sir. When people want to attack your business, may God raise up a voice, a Nicodemus that will preserve. May God direct Nicodemus Nicodemus is to our lives. People that will stand in the gap. People that will use their pedigree. Yes, they don't mind. They will use their pedigree for the cause that they believe in. Mm. Mm. Yes, he believed in Jesus and he used his pedigree. He used his voice. He used his position to make sure the body of Jesus did not see decay. He made sure he used everything to make sure that the body of Jesus was rightly embalmed. Even though he came at night. Even though he had to overcome certain hurdles but Nicodemus did not fail my Nicodemus will not fail your Nicodemus will not fail Lord we thank you this morning we give you all the glory we give you all the praise thank you Lord for the life of Nicodemus that we have learned today and what we have imbibed from his life yes thank you Lord and what are the lessons we have learned today when you don't understand something ask questions Ask the right person. Ask with an open mind, not with a mind of condemnation of criticism. Nicodemus didn't understand what is this born again stuff. Can you enter your mother's womb again? I don't understand. Jesus explained to him. And even when Jesus was explaining to him about the kingdom, he was able to enlarge his mind and his understanding. Somebody may be telling you what is bigger than what you know. You've got to be able to expand your mind to receive what God is doing. What else is it we learned about? About the life of Nicodemus. Nicodemus spoke up for Jesus, even though he belonged to the Sanhedrin, those who were against Jesus, because Jesus and John the Baptist did not like their hypocrisy. Yet, he knew that he stood for the truth. He spoke up for him in John chapter number 7, verse 50. What else did we learn from the life of Nicodemus? He used his pedigree, his capacity. When he knew that the body of Jesus was lying down there he needed to be embalmed and there was a joseph of arimathea another secret disciple he teamed up with him and together they embalmed the body of jesus and kept it in the tomb at that time when joseph of arimathea and nicodemus arose the disciples were nowhere to be found do not look and begin to say what of all the people that were with jesus this may be your own time to arise and do something this may be your own season 
This may be your own time of relevance. And don't look and say, oh, oh, these people, where is Peter? Where is James and John? I don't know. You know, sometimes we get to that situation. We know we're supposed to step in and say, hey, what of all the people that were there? And hey, what of all these people? He didn't look at that. At that time, Nicodemus rose up and teamed up with Joseph of Arimathea and they covered the body. In which area are you and I supposed to cover the body of Christ? Let us rise up and fulfill our destiny mandate, our kingdom mandate. Father Lord, we thank you for today, for what we have learned from the life of Nicodemus. To you be all glory, to you be all praise. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' much less name we pray. Amen. So continue to be the Nicodemus in your own area and the Lord bless you abundantly. My name is Busola Jegede from Daughters of Destiny.